Okay, so let's take a look at building a world from scratch. And I want to jump into this very quickly. We don't want a long introduction, but I do want a couple of quick notes for you as a world builder. If you are building a fantasy or science fiction world, you don't have to start with some massive, massive chunk. You can pick any part of it that you want to build, so don't feel like you need to have it all at once. You want to start with some big, broad questions, and we're going to go over those today. And I've made these videos fairly short because I want you to have an action to take at the end of it. I want you to know, okay, now we need to go do this. And once I'm done with that, then I can go on to the next video. It's better to do that than to binge the series. So finish a video, consider what that part of your world would look like. Maybe post it in the comments of the video, and then and only then move on to the next one. Anyway, let's jump right into it. So I want to start with what you are building. And this is the part that obviously is very nebulous and very broad. It's the hardest thing to answer. But when I say what, I mean, are you building a galaxy? Are you building a planet? Are you building a continent? Are you building a country? Is this some frontier town? You get to decide what that is. And so maybe in your head, you have a frontier town and zombies come out of the forest at night and attack it. And that's all you know about it. That's all you really need to get started. You just sort of need a what. What am I building? So a general concept. Think about what it is. Just an idea. And this is usually the easy part for most of us. We have tons and tons of ideas. So take one of those ideas and and use that core. The next part of it, though, is much more difficult, but can be highly advantageous. And what I'm trying to do is find a real world allegory for what I'm building. So even though I might be building something in a fantasy world that has no relation to Earth or building something on a galactic stage, which obviously I can never have you know seen, is there some part of our world, uh, the timeline, that I can liken it to? Something that I can look at from our own real world to use as sort of default placeholders for all of the stuff. So just as a quick note, like if we're looking at time period, which we'll do in a minute, should I be using crossbows or should I be using muskets? You you know, you're really going to have to decide what the time period is that you're working with, and that's going to answer a lot of questions. And not just in your head, in the audience's head, in the the player's head, if you're you're playing a role-playing game. These people have a set of notions that they have learned based on all the entertainment they've seen that's come before this, and they're going to be drawing on that. And you can either fight upstream against it, or you can lean into it. So it really helps for us to know what it is we're dealing with when trying to work with a setting. So what do I mean? Well, when you're determining the time period, let's say you want to do something prehistory. So you've got, you know, hot, steamy jungles with dinosaurs in them. You are working with a time period on Earth that isn't really well defined, but there are some rules there. We think that there wasn't a lot of high-tech civilization. So you can invent your own and insert it in and break all these rules. And in fact, I would encourage you to do so, and I've done so myself. But the start is generally going to be things like obsidian arrowheads, stone tip spears. They probably don't have much writing. There might be cave painting. Those are kind of the hallmarks of prehistory. And the closer you get to something like, let's say, Egypt or Samaria, the more you're getting into the ancient world, which we'll talk about next. But if you're doing what I, I you know, put in air quotes is cavemen, then you're writing prehistory and you have some preconceived notions that people expect. Again, stone is something they're going to expect to see. They probably got spears and maybe some loincloths. So think about what people would wear and then layer on top of it, how would your setting change that? If you have magic, for example, then how would magic change the life of the average person in that setting? If you're using, you know, arrowheads, would they be enchanted or would they invent an entirely new technology and have, you know, some sort of steel weaponry because they're way ahead of everybody else around them? And you sort of get to answer those questions. You just want that starting point. Now, if you're you're writing in an ancient world setting, we're talking early Egypt all the way through Sumeria and the Roman Empire, any of those settings. I think kind of Conan. Some of the hallmarks that you'll run into, scrolls, Bronze Age weaponry, so bronze swords. You're probably, you might see some iron swords, but that'd be considered high-tech stuff. And steel is probably not going to exist at all. If there are boats, they're small. They, they probably don't have sails. They may, but if they do, it's a single sail maybe. They're, they're definitely smaller than what you're going to see in later settings like medieval. And so while they may exist, they're, they're of limited size and navies aren't vast. I'd also throw the Greek Empire into this, the Indus Empire into this, and and China, any of those ancient settings, and you can flavor it the way that you want to. But if you want kind of a Marco Polo-esque setting, this is a way that you can achieve that. If you jump into medieval, now we're talking crossbows, longbows, like, you know, the, the English longbow. We've got bound books. 
You may even have a printing press. You've got horses and you know wooden ships. Your, your whole technology has progressed quite a ways from the ancient world. You're, you're really into the kind of European knight's feel if you're writing about medieval. And you could flavor that, of course, to any part of the world at that time. If you want more of an Arabic feel, as an example, you can look at an Arabic setting from that time period and adopt more of what they were doing. And, and I've done a bit of that. So like many of the countries in my Shattered Gods world reflect a specific earth culture, which I know is common for a lot of us to do. This one that you're looking at here, it, it's at a medieval level at its base, but you can see magic has progressed quite a lot and has really influenced society. Those, those Magitech pyramids behind them are, are quite powerful and important in the setting. So I did start with that medieval level and people having that kind of tech. And, you know, there are normal ships sailing around, but magic can allow you to do fantastic things and have definitely left its mark on the world. I have a near future setting. So in my case, it's post-apocalyptic. It doesn't have to be if you're writing anything modern, I would lump it in here. But most of the stuff that I write for science fiction and fantasy is either superhero or post-apocalyptic. So think The Walking Dead, maybe the Heroes TV show, you know, before it started sucking. Season one was great. The rest of it, let's not talk about it. At the other end, like if we're going to bookend near future, I would say on one side of it, you have post-apocalyptic like The Walking Dead. And on the other side of it, you have dystopian fiction like, let's say, The Hunger Games, which I think most people are familiar with. So on one side of near future, the apocalypse is either happening or just happened and people are trying to react to it and, and resources are limited and they're, they're seeking shelter but if you're going to the other end of it, you've got a lot more failing technology where the world has fallen to ruin and most stuff doesn't work. But there's probably a couple of oases where people have recaptured or relearned certain types of technology and might have all sorts of cool things. But in general, that's considered to be a mecca and most of the world has fallen to ruin. Supplies are very expensive. You have a very subsistence scavenger based you know, society set up. All of those are kind of hallmarks of that dystopian future. Unless you can get into the, and I'm going to put this in air quotes, island where, you know, the rich people with the technology live. If you're writing in any of those settings, the hallmarks are going to be you want to see remnants of the old world and how much of that is proportionate to how close to the apocalypse it is. If it's been a century, most of that stuff is gone. You're going to see bridges or the remains of it. But you're not going to find much in the way of cars. Those are going to be almost entirely rusted out if a century has passed. So you just sort of want to think about how far in the future am I talking the near future and how would that have influenced the world? If it's only been a year, then it still looks pretty much as it is today, except more like a disaster went through it. So you get to kind of pick how you're, you're crafting that particular world. And then finally, and this is the most nebulous of the settings, you've got far future. And this can mean we're talking about on Earth, like the Shannara books, where, you know, it looks like a fantasy setting, but it's really, you know, thousands of years have gone by and it's our world. Or much more commonly in my experience, you're talking about more of a science fiction settings like my Magitech Chronicles, where, you know, you have vast civilizations scattered across the entire galaxy. You have starships, you have faster than light travel. You have probably replicators, nanites. I mean, all of these things are very common in far future settings. And you get to decide how those things manifest or, you know, who to have them and what quantity. So as for me, I've also added dragons and magic and some armor is, is powered by technology, but you also have versions that are powered by magic. So I've altered the setting to fit what I wanted to add to it. But I started with, okay, it's the far future. It looks a bit like, you know, a little dash of Battlestar Galactica and a hint of Starcraft and, you know, maybe a little bit of all of these various properties that we're all familiar with tend to leak into our writing, whether we want to admit it or not. I sort of started like with those as baseline answers when building the Magitech Chronicles and then created everything I wanted from scratch. But it was really helpful to sort of understand, okay, the galaxy kind of looks like this when I was starting to build the initial pieces. So what I would like you to do is take some time and think about what time period you'd like this to be in. I'm going to leaf back through these, but do, does it fit in one of these? Does it fit in another? Are you writing something I didn't cover, like let's say steampunk? I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff we didn't talk about. But at the end of the day, what you need to do is answer the question for yourself, when? When is this set, if there is an analogous time in Earth's history or something that you're familiar with, what can you liken it to so you get some placeholders and can start building a world and answering you know, more questions about your specific setting? Like This is how we get that baseline. So if you would like to do this in the comments below, please define for me what it is you're creating, 
and bonus points when you are creating it in. And then we can progress to the next video and we can go through all of this and keep building until you're walking away with a world that you're happy with. Anyway, again, my name is Chris Fox. If you're interested in checking out my fiction, you can find that on Amazon or Audible. And the Magitech Chronicles RPG is, as of this recording, still in the Kickstarter. But if it's out of the Kickstarter, you can sign up and get yourself onto the beta list in the link in the comments. Thanks for watching.